Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. And today's topic of discussion is reversing motor starters with interlocks. Our objective is to take a look at reversing motor starters with interlocks. We'll discuss how paired contactors allow selective reversal of a three-phase AC industrial motor and how mechanical, electrical, and push-button interlocks prevent phase-to-phase -phase contact. This lecture operates under the assumption you've watched the rotating magnetic field, manual motor starters, and two and three wire magnetic motor starters lectures, all available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet, or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. As you'll recall, applied phase sequence dictates the directional rotation of an industrial three phase AC motor. Let's say a motor rotates clockwise when phase sequence seen at the motor terminals is L1, L2, and L3. If any two leads are exchanged, the motor will rotate counterclockwise. Customarily, L1 is exchanged with L2. However, L2 could be exchanged with L3, or L3 could be exchanged with L1. Regardless, applied phase sequence would be opposite to previously, and the motor would rotate counterclockwise. Recall that a manual reversing motor starter accomplishes reversal of rotational direction with the aid of a drum or cam switch. The manual motor starter consists of contacts and an overload manually actuated by an operator at the point of use. The contactor serves as the means of starting or stopping the motor by making or breaking an electrical connection, and the overload serves to protect the motor from sustained overload conditions. The purpose of the drum switch is to swap applied phase sequence only. This method, while appropriate for some applications, is clunky and inelegant and that the motor starter only must be used to make or break connections, not the drum switch. Drum switches are ordinarily not rated to make inrush current nor break full load current. An operator must be trained in its proper use. Additionally, as the name implies, a manual motor starter is for applications manually controlled by an operator at the point of use, limiting its applicability to situations necessitating nearly constant human supervision. It is for this reason magnetic reversing motor starters are employed. A magnetic reversing motor starter uses paired contactors to selectively energize a motor rather than a drum switch. In this case, the manual motor starter MS serves to disconnect the magnetic reversing motor starter for repair and services. One of the contactors is designated the F or forward contactor and is wired such the applied phase sequence is L1, L2, L3 seen by the motor when the forward primary contacts close. Let's say that this would see the motor rotate in the clockwise direction. The other contactor is designated the R or reversing contactor and is wired such that the applied phase sequence seen by the motor is L2, L1, L3. When the reversing contactor is closed, this would see the motor rotate in the counterclockwise direction. Note the overload services both the forward and reversing contactor. Regardless of which contactor is closed, the overload elements in series can sense incoming current. An overload in the forward mode is equally relevant to an overload in the reverse mode. Importantly, the simultaneous closure of the forward and reversing contactor is something that should never, ever occur. Not only does it not make sense to spin a motor both clockwise and counterclockwise, the simultaneous closure of the forward and reversing contactors is a phase-to-phase -phase event where phase one and two run headlong into each other with no current controlling element between. A phase-to-phase -phase event is characterized by an arc flash event hotter than the sun and a lab instructor's rage hotter than 10,000 suns. Never ever go phase to phase. We'll discuss three common interlock methods used to prevent this occurrence in a moment. The pilot ladder logic diagram for a magnetic reversing motor starter features an e-stop in series with a normally closed stop push button. The remainder of rung one and spilling over into rung two is a traditional three wire control circuit used to control the forward contactor. Note the momentary normally open forward push button has a holding contact, F1, associated with a forward contactor and parallel to it in rung 2. Rung 3, and spilling over into rung 4, 
is another traditional three-wire control circuit used to control the reversing contactor. Note the momentary normally open reverse push button has a holding contact, R1, associated with the reversing contactor in parallel to it in rung 4. Note the normally closed overload pilot contact in rung 1 serves to protect the motor from sustained overloads in both forward or reverse mode. Let's walk through the ladder logic diagram and see how this magnetic reversing motor starter works. If an operator were to press the forward push button, the momentary normally open forward switch would close. And via the normally closed e-stop, the normally closed stop, the now closed forward button, and the normally closed overload contact, the F coil of the forward contactor would be energized. When the coil of the F contactor energizes, its associated contacts change states. The normally open F1 holding contact in parallel with a forward push button closes, and the primary F contacts close. Note applied phase sequence as provided by the forward contactor is L1, L2, L3. The motor experiences inrush current and begins rotating clockwise. Once the motor reaches rated speed, the inrush current subsides and levels out to the full load rated current. If an operator were to release the momentary contact forward button, the spring return would return it to its normally open deactivated state. Note that the now closed F1 holding contact maintains the energized state of the F contactor coil. This means the primary F contactor stays closed and the motor continues spinning in the clockwise direction. That's the point of the holding circuit. It maintains the last asserted state. To stop the motor, an operator must press the Norma Close Stop Push button. The now open stop de-energizes the F coil and the associated contacts return to their de-energized state. The F1 holding contact opens removing the path in parallel to the forward push button. The F primary contacts open and the motor free spins to a halt. The release of the stop button returns this reversing motor starter back to the ready state. Similarly, if an operator were to press the reverse push button, the momentary normally open reverse switch would close. And via the normally closed e-stop, the normally closed stop, the now closed reverse button, and the normally closed overload contact, the R coil of the reversing contactor would be energized. When the coil of the R contactor energizes, its associated contacts change states. The normally open R1 holding contact in parallel with the reverse button closes, and the primary R contacts close. Note the applied phase sequence as provided by the reversing contactor is L2, L1, L3. The motor experiences inrush current and begins rotating counterclockwise. Once the motor reaches rated speed, the inrush current subsides and levels out at the full load rated current. If an operator were to release the momentary contact reverse button, the spring return would return it to its normally open deactivated state. Note that the now closed R1 holding contact maintains the energized state of the R contactor coil. This means the primary R contactor stays closed and the motor continues spinning in the counterclockwise direction. That's the point of the holding circuit. It maintains the last asserted state. To stop the motor, an operator must again press the normally closed stop button. The now open stop de-energizes the R coil and the associated contacts return to their de-energized state. The R1 holding contact opens removing the path in parallel to the reverse push button. The R contact or primary contacts open and the motor free spins to a halt. Once the stop button returns to its normally closed deactivated state, this reversing motor starter returns to the ready state. Notice while in its natural deactivated closed state, the maintained contact e-stop in no way, shape or form affects functionality of the system. When an operator presses and releases forward, the motor spins clockwise. When an operator presses and releases stop, the motor stops, ready to initiate another start cycle. When an operator presses and releases reverse, the motor spins counterclockwise. When an operator presses and releases stop, the motor stops, ready to initiate yet another start cycle. If, however, an operator were to observe an unsafe scenario, by hitting the maintained e-stop, the motor would stop, 
and the system would be disabled. Importantly, due to the maintained rather than momentary nature of the e-stop, the system will remain disabled until the e-stop is reset. Neither the forward nor the reverse button will energize either contact or coil, and as such, the primary contacts will not close despite repeated attempts to do so. That's the point. The maintained e-stop has disabled the system. Only after the e-stop has been reset and returned to the closed position can the system now start the motor. Similarly, notice the normally closed overload contact serves to protect the motor from sustained overload conditions in both forward and reverse mode. In the ready or go state, the normally closed overload contact in no way, shape, or form affects the functionality of the system. If, however, the motor experiences sustained overload, the normally closed overload contact would open and de-energize either contact or coil regardless of rotational direction. Only when the overload has cooled and reset will the ladder logic diagram allow an operator to start the motor. Notice in the event of power loss in the pilot circuit, either holding circuit will drop out. Upon restoration of power, the motor will not automatically restart. Only when an operator makes the conscious decision to restart the motor by actively pressing the forward or reverse button does it do so. A magnetic reversing motor starter, if you think about it, is just like two regular three-wire control circuits in the same ladder logic diagram. One for forward mode, servicing the forward contactor, wired such that the applied phase sequence is L1, L2, L3. The other for reverse mode, servicing the reverse contactor, wired such that the applied phase sequence is L2, L1, L3. The e-stop, stop, and normally closed overload contact services both the forward and reverse mode. Returning to our previous admonition about simultaneous closure of the forward and reverse contactor, what's to prevent an operator from pressing and releasing forward, and while the motor is spinning clockwise, pressing the reverse button? The answer is, as currently implemented, nothing. While in the forward mode, the F contactor is closed and applied phase sequence is L1, L2, and L3. An operator pressing reverse would also energize the R coil and close the R contactor. Phase 1 and 2 run headlong into each other and one or both of the contactors explode. It is for this reason magnetic reversing starters must include an interlock, where the term interlock means a method of preventing the simultaneous closure of both the forward and reverse contactor. Interlocks are generally made possible via three methods, mechanical, electrical, and push button. Sometimes more than one method is used. Let's start with the simplest means of interlocking a magnetic reversing motor starter via mechanical means. A mechanical interlock is an interlocking method that prevents the physical travel of one contactor's contact carrier in the event the other contact carrier is engaged. A mechanical interlock is often indicated schematically with a slanted dashed line between the interlocked contactor coils. A mechanical interlock necessitates the forward and reverse contactor be physically paired together. This is often accomplished by a plastic wedge or a plunger fitted between the two contactors, or sometimes the mechanical interlock is an entirely separate device that must slip between the two contactors. When the forward contactor coil is energized, the forward contact carrier is pulled into the coil and pushes the plastic mechanical interlock into the path of the reversing contactor. If the reversing contactor coil is also energized with the forward contact carrier and armature already pulled into its coil, the engaged mechanical interlock prevents the physical movement of the reversing contact carrier. The same situation occurs if the reversing contactor coil is engaged first. The movement of the contact carrier disallows the physical movement of the forward contact carrier. Whichever coil is energized first is the one and only state that is continually asserted and disallows the latter. If an operator were to press both forward and reverse buttons simultaneously, whichever contact carrier got the jump on the other would be the one and only asserted state and predicting which one gets the jump is a bit of a gamble. Long story short, 
don't hire operators dumb enough to think simultaneously spinning a motor clockwise and counterclockwise is a good idea. Notice a mechanical interlock does not prevent the opposite coil from being energized. It simply prevents physical movement of the opposite contact carrier. The opposite coil therefore might experience a premature burnout if this condition were to continue. Since inrush current when the armature is not pulled into the coil is substantially higher than ordinary seal-in current when the armature is inside the coil. Let this observation be filed into your troubleshooting bag of tricks when presented with this scenario. If an obstinate operator pressed and released reverse, then pressed and held forward, the forward coil would be expected to experience an early death. It is for this reason we'll step up our game to incorporate an additional level of protection, including electrical interlocks. Contactors ordinarily feature an associated auxiliary pilot contact used for holding purposes. If a system necessitates its inclusion, one can also attach an auxiliary contact block to expand the utility of the contactor. When the coil of the contactor is energized, the contacts in the auxiliary contact block also change states. Consider the inclusion of one of the normally closed auxiliary contacts associated with a forward contactor, F2, in the path of the reversing contactor. Likewise, consider the inclusion of one of the normally closed auxiliary contacts associated with the reversing contactor, R2, in the path of the forward contactor. When the forward contactor is energized, its associated contacts change states, meaning the normally closed contact in rung 3 opens. While in the forward state, the closure of the reverse push button does nothing since the now open F2 contact prevents the R coil from being energized. Similarly, when the reversing contactor is energized, its associated contacts change states, meaning the normally closed R2 contact in rung 1 opens. While in the reverse state, the closure of the forward button does nothing since the now open R2 contact prevents the forward coil from being energized. The inclusion of electrical interlocks provided by an auxiliary contact block therefore prevent the coils of the forward and reversing contactor from being simultaneously energized. Note, however, nothing prevents the physical movement of the opposite contact carrier. Consider a scenario in which the auxiliary contact block is broken, incorrectly wired, or is improperly linked with the associated contactor. The contactors may be electrically interlocked, but are not mechanically interlocked. While in the forward mode, nothing prevents an operator from manually pushing the reversing contact carrier in. Additionally, consider a scenario in which one of the contact carriers is jammed or stuck in the closed position. The simultaneous closure of both contactors would constitute a phase-to-phase -phase event. It is for this reason a mechanical interlock can also be introduced to this same system. Here's the pilot schematic for a magnetic reversing starter that is both mechanically and electrically interlocked. The mechanical interlock prevents physical movement of the opposite contact carrier, but does not prevent the opposite coil from being energized. In contrast, the electrical interlock prevents the opposite coil from being energized, but does not prevent physical movement of the opposite contact carrier. The complementary double layer of protection ensures that the forward and reverse contactor are never simultaneously closed. In forward mode, the reverse button serves no purpose and the motor continues to spin in the clockwise direction. In reverse mode, the forward button serves no purpose and the motor continues to spin in the counterclockwise direction. The stop button serves to stop the motor in both modes. If the application warranted its inclusion, a spring applied, electrically released brake could be added to the motor such that when de-energized, the motor is brought to a rapid stop rather than free spinning to a halt. Finally, consider a third common means of interlocking a magnetic reversing motor starter called push button interlocking. Push button interlocking makes use of mechanically interlocked forward and reverse buttons that when one mode is selected, the opposite mode is deselected. If you want to think of it this way, a mechanical interlock this allows physical movement of the opposite contact carrier. An electrical interlock disallows the opposite coil from being energized, and a push button interlock disallows simultaneous assertion of both states.
Note that push-button interlocking should only be used in conjunction with mechanical and electrical interlocking and is intended to supplement these methods, not replace them. Note that the normally closed of the mechanically interlocked forward push button acts just like a stop button for the reverse circuit. Similarly, notice that the normally closed side of the mechanically interlocked reverse push button acts just like a stop push button for the forward circuit. The observant among you will note something very, very different about the behavior of this system in contrast to our previous discussion of reversing magnetic motor starters using mechanical and electrical interlocks. This behavior is so different, discussion of this particular magnetic reversing motor starter using push-button interlocking will have to wait until another lecture, since it exhibits a phenomenon called plugging, in that the motor reverses direction immediately without the stop button being pressed. For those that doubt this assertion, I leave it to you to dissect the following scenario. Consider an operator pressing and releasing forward, then pressing and releasing reverse. Aha! Anticipation, as they say, is part of showmanship. Alright, this about wraps up our introduction to magnetic reversing motor starters and interlocks. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at magnetic reversing motor starters. We examined the primary schematic using paired contactors and the pilot ladder logic diagram. Additionally, we discussed and compared mechanical and electrical interlocks and briefly introduced push-button interlocking. Interlock methods are used to prevent simultaneous closure of the forward and reversing contactor. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. and Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.